In this lesson, we're going to discuss some common routing protocols and a couple of routing management concepts. First, let's look at the protocols. One of the oldest routing protocols is Routing Information Protocol, or RIP. RIP is an Interior Gateway Protocol, or IGP, so it's designed for private organizations to send routes within a private network. RIP uses hop count as a routing metric, but it's limited to 15 hops between any two networks. If you ever see a hop count of 16 with RIP, that means the network is unreachable. In other words, the size of your network is a built-in limitation for this protocol. You can have a maximum of 15 hops between any two subnets on your network. RIP is also a distance vector routing protocol, meaning that it shares its entire routing table with every neighbor at every routing update. But be aware that RIP version 1 doesn't support VLSM, or variable length subnet masks. The newer version of RIP, RIP version 2, has all the same characteristics of RIP version 1 except that it does support VLSM. The next routing protocol is Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, or EIGRP. From its name, you can see that it's also an IGP. EIGRP uses bandwidth as its metric and estimates delays. It's classified as a hybrid routing protocol since it's a distance vector protocol that includes key improvements that can make it act like a link state protocol. EIGRP also supports VLSM. Another protocol is called Open Shortest Path First, or OSPF. OSPF is also an IGP and uses link cost as its metric. OSPF is a link state method that supports variable length subnet masks. It's designed for networks larger than RIP can support. With OSPF, your private network is divided into different areas, and each area can contain multiple subnets that are linked together. The routers within an area only keep track of the routes within that area. OSPF requires you to have a special area called Area 0. Area 0 is the backbone that connects all the other areas together. Every other area on the network must have a connection to Area 0, either directly or indirectly. There are two types of routers in this configuration, internal routers and area border routers. Internal routers share information about their routes within their assigned areas. Area border routers sit on the edges of areas to connect them together and share information between them. If an area isn't directly connected to Area 0 by touching it, it can connect indirectly through an area border router. In this case, Area 0 would extend to connect with this area. Also, with a link state protocol, the boundary between the areas is designated by area border router locations. There's one more type of router you should know about for OSPF configuration. It's called an Autonomous System Border Router. Its job is to communicate with routers outside of the autonomous system. Now to review, OSPF's key design characteristics are an area zero that connects all other areas, routers within each area that share information about routes, and area border routers that share information between areas. The autonomous system border router shares information outside of the autonomous system. Now let's look at Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP. BGP is the only exterior gateway protocol, or EGP, that we'll discuss. It uses a special metric based on policies and rules. It is, to a degree, a distance vector protocol, but it's often labeled as an advanced distance vector protocol, and it's sometimes called a path vector protocol. It also supports VLSM. The key thing to remember is that BGP is the routing protocol used to share routes on the internet and between autonomous systems. As an administrator, you don't usually have to think about BGP. Most organizations that connect to the internet use one of these protocols internally and don't need to share information on the internet. But there's an exception to this rule. If you have a very large network that uses two or more connections through different internet service providers, you'll have to do things differently. In this case, your routers decide which internet connection to use to efficiently route information. Because of that, you might want to use BGP routers to learn about the routes that exist on the internet. You can also use it to share information with these routers so that they can efficiently route information into your autonomous system. So, how do you know which routing protocol you should use? The size of your network will tip you off. Choose RIP for small private networks because of the 15 hop limit, Use EIGRP or OSPF for large private networks. OSPF is more commonly used because it scales better and most service providers support it. 
BGP is used within the internet, and sometimes it's used for private networks that have multiple connections through different ISPs. When you run BGP on your private network, you're using routes on the internet to choose the best route to the destination, and you're also advertising your own private routes on the internet. Most of the time, the routing protocols make the choices that are best for your network traffic. There are times, though, when you'll want to manipulate traffic for better performance. It can be helpful to know the routes that are being used and the speed that IP packets are traveling. Time to Live, or TTL, can help you with this. TTL is part of an IP packet that communicates with the router to let it know it's been in the network too long. This is like putting a timer on a packet. When the timer is up, the packet is discarded. This prevents packets from endlessly traversing the network, but it can also be used to determine how your network is working. In an IPv6 network, the TTL field is also called the hop limit. The host that sends the packet sets the TTL value. Each router that receives the packet decreases the value. Once the value reaches zero, the router sends a message back to the sender. TraceRT and Ping are utilities that use TTL to provide routing and speed information. With this information, you can use traffic shaping techniques to ensure performance based on packet type and control the traffic flow for high priority packets. For example, if there's congestion at a router, traffic shaping can use bandwidth throttling or rate limiting to delay less important traffic so that the more critical packets flow freely. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we reviewed some commonly used routing protocols that include RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP. Then, we touched on how we can use time to live and traffic shaping techniques to see how our network is functioning and control it where needed.